are against this gospel preaching, gospel gathering, the only place whereby he sent kids together and want to pray, to provide one, and feel that the Lord gonna speak to the people, the, his holocaust. So I'm just to come here, all brothers and sisters. Before we continue, start with our scripture reading. And the scripture reading come from the book of uh, that is First Kings chapter four, whereby Brother Covid will read it in our local dialect, and thereafter uh, Brother Austin Banda from Kasungu uh, would elect a song of praise, and uh, after that Brother Felix Mandarasi will lead the first Philippians. Chapter three in our local direct. When I get a of Uga 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 Kumene <laughs> The Holy Pandi are here, Anna Akita, Arendi. The Osa Pati Manawa, Yazidi, Warren Piramidi. The Benaya, Manawa, Yada, Anarika, and the one Kondo. The Zato, the Yadala, Anarian Kondo. The Azaria, Manawa, Nakani, Nayana, the Abitao. The Zabadu, Manawa, Nakani, Anarina, the Pondrao. The Adisara and then the Banja Rampu, the Adoni, and then the Banja Rampu, the Adoni Ramu, Mana Akida, and the one who spoke. The Bosoro Moana Dinawa, the Bita of Kumidam, and then the Israel, the Kiram Kumu, the Banja Aki, Kapia, and Yoko, and Kisha, the Kuya Zukisha, the Kisha, Wajaga, and now the world. Kabita wa uta, 
kira ayo tanda itu ini ada cuma enggak cuma nyanja nama dia nama nama bosolo mo anala muri la ayo ganda kira te kira wudi kula tuli tuli kuku maria iku budo anu ana bila na ni tuli anu kira solo mo masi mo sabuaji mo zakuja to solo mo kufika sifu limoto Dina ni mimi kama kuna hata kitu kwa sababu ndimi kama kuna hata ni moja ya upa kama kutete ngoende zone ni babu kuna kumusa mabuni ya uti kosa za ni mungu kosa ni gram ngoendo ni swala kipo kipala ni zo akuti anara muni la siku ni sija jinola pirati ndaka kutisa kikira kutaka nikuma kuna moyo akutsika ni nola kutati akala ndendere kutsika kutete ku ayuta ndaiza laini akala kutsika kunzuyese patinde patinde kutsika waje yandira kugani bado kutete kuponzi asoro kutoka mu analina zo kutsika akamfalo ama kutsika 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 nayi ya kabalo ziki kumi kabuzi kwa katika waja katika sana cha kuja solo ya kuonsi au cha kutimira kumi solo kuonsi mwezi waje kama leo atanguka kuonsi kalele son nudua atavalo sabu ya nazo kumaloka kuonsi munga mwe anamu Romulungu anampa mtoto 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 mtaramu. Dinti mawazo wa zame tundu. Donga nchenga uli mbali na nyanja. Kwa Solomo inapota nzeru za gote au mawa. Dinzi ndio kwa kwa. Kwa budi analiwa nzeru wa kwa kwa. Kwa kwa ni kwa kwa. Ni hapa kwa kwa. Karida ana amaho. Ipo bidi yake na kigirani ndugu sio kuzungira. Bwana ni na miambo ziki tisa. Ipo miambo tatu na riziki chukuzi ambu zisa. Na kama zamite, na kama zamite ngo, ya mina ukunguza kuri mbano kila haiko. Kukutuka hapa koma. Na kama ukunguza nyama, mbano, jizu njuzu kwa wa, njiza komba. Ipo anafika hapo, 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 Oso kila kwa mapungu onse atiku onse atanzi. Atene atamba. Amen. Amen. Nimu namba 62. Longa buye yetu ulibe uli. Oh, 
For sure, there is no any other than Jesus. It's only Christ, the Jesus, the crucified one. I was sitting the scripture reading from the book of Corinthians, first Corinthians chapter three, from this one whereby Father Felix Mamaras will read it. Father Felix. Sindi cause the Gronkula and Dino, Monga and the Auzim, Omamonga Atopi, Monga Maga and the Macris Jess. Dina gets a in Mukaka, Sicha would yet show him by I. Babutisimuna she calls the Anga Kare Babutisimu Najikosa Anga Kare Sopanorin. Simuna she calls the Babutimuri in so atopi. Wakuti po kala pali mkuyiti nindo ya wakati kwa inu. Sikuli atu bigodi. Ndi kuyenda enda monga mungu. Wakuti pa mene wina anena. Ndi ndine wa paulo. Kwa mamzache ndine wa apolo. Sikuli antu godi. Kwa apolo nchiani. Ndi paulo nchiani. Atu mika mene muna kumipilira. Kwa iwo yense. Munga mbuya Adam Pata. Njina waka ine, achiri ilako. Umamuru ungu, atakuliti. Kotero, sali kanku. Kapena oyo, oyo, pale. Kapena oyo, chiri ilako. Umamuru ungu, amena kuliti. Kuma oyo, gayo, tuwa chiri ilako, amoti. Kuma yense, azalani ya mpoto ya acha kwa yeyeka. Munga, mwa kuchititza kwa ache kwa yeyeka. A Christu ali nyumba ya munu. Yesu ndiye masuko ali nyumba. Yes, nai. Kwa kute ife, ndife anjitwa ansake abunu. Shirimo cha murungu, shimango cha murungu. Ndi ife. Munga machisomo cha murungu. Chipatisidwa kwa ife. Ngati mwini, mamangu kwa ruso. Daika masiko, kumawina amanga. Kumayense ayanganile umo amangila amene. Pakuti bali bemuni, akosa kuika pati kwa eni. Kwa maamene aiki kwa Yesu Christ. Mangati wina. Kwa mangati wina, amanga papasiko goridi. Siliva. Nyala ya mtengo, ya mtengo wachi. Mtengo, mauzu, tiputu. Nishito ya yense, iza mune tegwa. Pakuti... Sikuno, liza chisonyeza, chifuko kuti ya kumuru, moto. Dipo, moto oka, liza yese la nshito ya yense, ikala yotaye. Ngati nshito ya mtu aliyense, ikala imene adai manga, atzaila ndira moto. Ngati nshito ya wina, itentedwa, liza ono ngeeka, sache. 
kwa ma yeye kaza kumbuka kwa mamonga mwomwe mwomo asiste wadi kufikia kuti ivuri kachiswamu kuti mzimu amuru akomera mwai kati wina aona kachiswamu amenewa nsomulungu atamuona pakupika chiswamu lungu alipopatulika amenewa yeye Mungu asadzinyengeka ngati ina Yesu kuti aliwanse mwe mtawi ino ya pansi kumana akale opusa kuti akakale wanse pakuti nzeru ya tsikwa la pansi iliyopusa kwa mulu akuti kwalembe ii akwiranse ngenero la ndipo so abuyi asindikira zolingirira sa anse ndizili zopanda pati kifacha ache bali pemotsi atitamande mwa atu akuti zinthu zonse nsa paulo kapena apolo kapena hefa kapena jiwa la pansi kapena moyo kapena impa kapena mafono ano kapena siri nkuta zonse ndiza koma inu ndimu akristu ndimu kristu ndiye wa mulu Kimba nyimbo namba 50 Kimba namba 50 Ndamlungu kuwe wanga amba pepelo ndi lida mana
take our Bibles once again and look in John chapter 1. My text today will be from verse 19 down to verse 29. And I want to speak with you about the testimony of John the Baptist. Yohane 1, verse 19, we will read up in tonight, page 98, page 98. What a blessing it is for us to have in our hands the inspired word of God that gives us the testimony of the forerunner of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we know of the Lord Jesus Christ is revealed here in the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Here we have the testimony of one who was actually the last of the Old Testament prophets. Even though we're reading about him here in the New Testament, he was the last of the Old Testament prophets. Of all the prophets that came before him, none of them, even though they prophesied of the Lord Jesus, ever saw him with their eyes. But here was one whose testimony we have who heard and saw the very person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Here we have 
amene ada rosera so zakubwera kwa ke kwa Yesu Kristo kama yeyu ada katsimikisira pa uyo ya dikira yeni ya kubwera kwa ke kwa Yesu Kristo and if we had the time we would go back and read some of those old testament portions of scripture that foretold of John the Baptist's coming and of his declaring the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Particularly in Isaiah chapter 40, if you want to turn there briefly, we have his work prophesied in verse 3 of Isaiah 40. It says there in verse 3, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And then it says, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. That's speaking of Christ. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. <laughs> This is exactly the testimony that John the Baptist gives here in verse 23 of our text, and I know we haven't read that far, but it says in John 1, 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. <laughs> And yet, as great as John the Baptist was to be as the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, yet our Lord said of him that he was less than the least in the kingdom of God. In other words, his role, although it was to be the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, would not be putting him above any others that the Lord Jesus Christ came in the world to save. <laughs> Our Lord spoke of him in Matthew chapter 11 and verses 10 and 11 in this manner, Matthew 11, 10 and 11. It says here, For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. 
ndime yake ya teni ya mataifa na kuti kapena ya mate kapena tumba tumba la kamba la kunjira kapena mara ya wili kapena sabato kapena ndodo kapuni wanchido aina la kulandira chakuja zake ndipo mzinda uli wonse kapena mudzi mukalo wapo mufunzise amena ali woyenera momwemo so here's where we see in verse 11 that even though he was a great prophet yet he was not to be greater than the less of the least in the kingdom of God that God the Father had chosen and for whom Christ came and paid the debt. He says there in verse 11, this is our Lord speaking of him, Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding, this is important, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. We're not to exalt men above measure, but what we're seeing here is that in Christ, all who are the Lord share the same position before him in that mm. salvation that he has come and worked out on their behalf. As we're going to see in my text, John the Baptist did not want the attention on himself, but he came to declare the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a good lesson for any that are preachers that the Lord raised up. It's not about us, it's about him. So this gospel that we're reading here, according to John, that was John the Apostle, who while Christ was on earth, laid his head on our Lord's bosom, on his breast. So that John here is writing about John the Baptist in verse 19 when he says, and this is the record of John. In other words, of John the Baptist when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? And that's why I've entitled this study The Testimony of John the Baptist because that's what that word record means and this is the record of John the Baptist. Now that's a word that John the Apostle in writing uses often in his gospel. Amen. 
Look in verse 32. And John bear record. So this is the apostle John writing about John the Baptist saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. He's speaking there when John the Baptist baptized our Lord. When John the Apostle writes about John the Baptist bearing record, you see that's the same word, to bear record as we have here in verse 19, and this is the record of John. And look again in verse 34, I saw, so again, this is John the Baptist, what he saw, and notice, and bear record that this is the Son of God. That's a strong word when you stop and think about it. It's the same word that would be used if someone was called into court before the judge and would have to raise his right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, that that testimony that he is about to give before the judge as a legal testimony is true. So here's why we can believe his testimony. It's because not only did the Lord raise him up and establish him to be that servant to testify of Christ, but this is a strong word. It's as if he's standing before the judge of all. That is God Himself in declaring this testimony to be true. Unlike many preachers today that are false witnesses, in other words, they're saying things about God and about Christ that are not true. When false preachers declare that God loves every single sinner in the world, they are bearing false witness against God. When false preachers declare that the Lord Jesus Christ came to lay down his life for every single sinner in the world, they are bearing false witness against God. Their testimony is against the very testimony of Scripture. The one thing is true about those servants of God that he raises up and sends forth. They declare exactly 
what the scriptures declare concerning God and concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like here in verse 19, when the Jews sent priests and Levites, these were the religious people of the day from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? His declaration was taken straight, straight from the scriptures. You get down to verse 23 that I already read. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. As said the prophet Isaiah, his testimony is from the scriptures. That's how we know a man is sent from God when his testimony, the sworn testimony, the record that he gives is according to the scriptures, but secondly, it's consistent every time he speaks. It does not change. That's one thing in court when they're trying to get a witness to change his testimony to prove his witness false that's what they do but when that testimony is consistent every time with the truth then is when you say well that's a true witness <laughs> These that were sent to ask John the Baptist this question of who art thou, they were not friends. They were already offended that here was a man who was preaching outside of their traditions and outside of their religion. I will tell you today that that's where you're going to find those that the Lord has raised up to preach Christ. They're not in these religious organizations that preach up works or man's will. They're outside. The Lord separates them out. John the Baptist didn't even have a building. He was preaching in the wilderness. <laughs> And the Lord was causing multitudes to come hear John the Baptist, and there were many that were being baptized by him to confess the Lord Jesus Christ and his work of redemption that he came to accomplish. And because of that, there was a great stir that was being made because there were many more showing interest in John the Baptist now than were following these religious leaders of the day. 
ndiye no tu padali chisoko ndizo cha chikulu maka chipoja gulu limene limatsatira yohane ndi ilo limene limakana chipozeso ichi limatsatira anthu ndizo konda wanthu it doesn't even take a great multitude to cause a stir sometimes it's just one individual that the lord is pleased to teach of christ and if they're found in these religious organizations just that one person is going to be like a thorn in the flesh to those and they're going to want them gone they're going to kick them out <laughs> amene aine kila kutsegulidwa maso kodwa kuti munthu akatsegulidwa maso mungu akamuthandizira akakhala pakati pa bale nthawi yomwe amakhala minga mwa balewo kodwa kuti abalewe na amamu tsotsa pampingo po umu chapangitsa kuti ndi osafunikira anso kukhala pakati pawo now in luke chapter 3 and verse 15 it says and as the people were in expectation it's not talking about the pharisees it's talking about the people these that the lord was drawing to hear john the baptist it says and all men mused in their hearts of john whether he were the christ or not <laughs> Now here we see where whenever someone hears a preacher of God who is preaching Christ, it's a distinct message. It's different. And so when people begin to follow that message, or follow that preacher there's a tendency to exalt the preacher above measure chotsi wika chakuti utenga wabwino weni weni ndi wosiana ndi mauthenga onse kodwa ndi ndi padi wina amene akonza kulalikira uthenga wabwino weni weni anthu tsadza umvetsetsa adzasokonekera kodwa ndi ndi padi apenzeke wina amene adza utsatsile uthenga osokonezao ndi simarekera chisomo in fact unless they're corrected people will begin to exalt the preacher even above god putting that preacher in the place of god and those who are false preachers they love to have it so they want people coming to them they want to be in the place of of christ even and praying for people and having the attention on them but such was not the case with john the baptist but you can see in verse 20 how he quickly turned the attention away from himself and this is an important lesson for us as preachers when people begin to follow us when they begin to exalt us even above the message or above christ himself we need to let them know we are not the christ <laughs> Yohane ada tamangira ukana kuti yeyo si Kristo ndicho linga chona kuti ule mune mara mane zisapite kwa yeyo koma zipite kwa Yesu umunso ndi mene ipeyo ndikaona anthu ayamba kuti tsatira ndikupereka ule mwa ipe ndifulumire kuthawamo ndikupereka kuti ule mwonso vite kwa Yesu osati kwa ipe ai notice twice he says there in verse 20 and he confessed in other words he testified and denied not but confessed in other words testified as one under oath i am not the christ father the straight that would be ada vomera akamara ada vomera sikuti ana ndo zauta ada nina kuti ndi christo ai koma kuti ada chitira uboni ada lalikira kuti 
ya osa tikukana osa kana na alola kuti sindine krisi tu so here's john the baptist he was the lord's forerunner he had appeared in the wilderness in fulfillment of isaiah's prophecy but these lacking any spiritual understanding being blind not only did not know who he was nor did they know the christ kono yohane mbatizi ada perekedwa gwako zegereza kuwela kwa yesu kristo kwa mayo sada kumere kuti yeni kristo anga kare ada kuwela kwa kwa njira ya yesu kristo mene momo ni mene wala nikila uona ame nikila kuchita kusafo mereza and so in verse 21 when he said well i'm not the christ they're still curious you see no one is going to know christ apart from the spirit revealing him in them they're always going to be looking around to someone else now they ask then the next question saying what then art thou elias that's a word for elijah why should they ask John if he was Elijah? That's because there was a general expectation among the Jews at that time that Elijah would appear on earth before Christ would appear. And this was because of a false interpretation of scripture. It's like many today that go to the scriptures and try to use it to preach about end times and what is to come. There are a lot of false interpretations concerning the coming again of Christ. When you read in Malachi, for example, and Malachi was the prophet that preceded John the Baptist, only there were 400 years between Malachi and John the Baptist. And when you read Malachi chapter 4, just go to Matthew in your Bible and go back one book, you'll find Malachi. In chapter 4 and verses 5 and 6, you might read that and think, well, they had reason to think that Elijah would appear because that's what it says. These are the last words that God delivered through Malachi before those 400 years of silence. And 
And it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So you could think and say, well, they had reason to, to expect then Elijah to appear. But look what our Lord declared when you come back here to Matthew chapter 11. In verse 12, down to verse 15, here's what our Lord declared so that there's no doubt now that that Elijah that was prophesied should come was none other than John the Baptist. It says there in verse 12 of Matthew 11, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. Now when it says that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force, Picture here a great multitude of people that are hungry and they are storming like you would think uh, a, a place that furnished rice for the people. We've seen this happen. They are so hungry that they take it by violence. They want to get some food to eat. So hungry they are. <laughs> As Christ went from place to place preaching the kingdom of which he is the king, the people pressed upon him. There was a rush as if in a violent way to see him and to hear him. That was the Spirit of God working. And you look there in verse 13 of Matthew 11, it says, And all the prophets and law prophesied until John. That's why I said he's the last of the Old Testament prophets. Now verse 14 says, and this is Christ speaking, if ye will receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which was for to come. But it says in verse 15, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now, was John the Baptist lying then? Here in my text in John chapter 1, when they asked him, Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Now, 
amene kuyohane kuja amene amvuza apa ndi wendweli amene amindi ne ai no because he wasn't actually elijah but he was sent in the spirit of elijah and just as elijah in his day foretold the coming of Christ. So John the Baptist would be in the spirit of Elijah, according to the scriptures, to foretell, to be the forerunner of Christ. So again, all the attention is on John, not the one that he came to announce, but on him. And that's the way it's always going to be when people are still blind. They want to know who you are, and they have no interest in who the Christ is. <laughs> So coming back to our text in John chapter 1 and verse 21, they then ask another question, Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Now these are people that had read the Old Testament scriptures and knew them. And so they could cite different portions of the scriptures. And when they say, art thou that prophet? They're asking based on what Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 18. And in verse 15, when Moses declared, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. And again in verse 18, he says, I will raise them up a prophet, the Lord speaking here, from among their brethren like unto me and will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now these words of Moses had been declared over 1,500 years before Christ appeared. Think of that, 1,500 years later is when Christ would appear. And when Moses spoke of another prophet like unto him, Moses was a type of Christ in that he spoke forth the word of God and he was established as that mediator between the people and God. You know, Moses, you know, 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 you know,
ndi amalankula zakubwera kwa mkhala pakati kwa pakati pa duomene tochimwa ndi mulungu but even here moses was not drawing attention to himself as anything but rather like any that speak on behalf of god point sinners to christ the mediator so now over 1500 years there was this expectation that this prophet would appear not knowing that Moses spoke of Christ but coming back here to my text in John chapter 1 and verse 21, each time John answered, I am not. So here now in verses 22 and 23, we see that they're still curious. They said unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? <laughs> I will tell you that as the Lord raises up his preachers in different parts around the world, when their message begins to be heard, and word gets out to some of these religious organizations, they're going to send people to find out, well, who are you? And who do you represent? They're curious, even though they don't know the Christ. <laughs> Now, John might have answered, and it may have given him some more authority in their eyes by saying, I am the son of Zacharias, the priest, and he would have been true. He would have been right. He might even have answered, as is said in Luke chapter 1 and verse 15, I am filled with the Spirit from my mother's womb. He might even have answered, I am a remarkable man mentioned in the Old Testament scriptures. But how did he answer? He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He answered, as we see in verse 23, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. I'm just the voice, that one that the Lord raised up to declare Christ to this generation. Now, 
And there's where he quotes Isaiah 40 in verse 3. Make straight the way of the Lord. That shows that the Lord Jesus Christ was none other than God himself because that word Lord is the word for God. He came to make straight the way of the Lord, to prepare the way for God in the flesh, the one who would come to lay down his life and pay the sin debt of his people. And here we see that men who are sent from God, as was said of John in John chapter 1 and verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John that they don't seek glory for themselves, but they own that they are but a voice which God himself must open the mouth and cause and declare. Otherwise, they're nothing. When John referred to himself as the voice, he used that very term that the Holy Spirit had declared of him 700 years previously there in Isaiah's day, in Isaiah 40 and verse 3. But his mission, his purpose, his testimony was to not bear witness of himself, but to bear witness to Christ. You know, the one thing about a voice is that it is to be heard and not seen. <laughs> it's not about us. It's about Christ. May the Lord be pleased to bring this home to our hearts. It's not about us. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And if he gives us breath to open this mouth, may we only speak of him. But a second thing is it's not only about him, but notice he says, the voice cried in the wilderness. That's where the Lord's preachers are found. They're not found in the temples of the day or in the centers of religion. No, they're in the wilderness, the wilderness representing the fallen sinners of this world. But in that fallen world, God has purposed that some should hear. And nothing has changed from John's day all the way to ours. He faced a world of empty religion. That's who the Judaizers were. They were following their traditions and uh, the customs of men, but not Christ. 
ndiyo bali bechi bale chida sinza ai zimene zidali mwa munthu ya dzana mpaka na pano zilimo mwemo mene munthu ya yohane azakala otutsa achipembezo okhulubirira chipe tozao okhulubirika mchipe mino wedi wenu mene nuzaula ligira they were a nation of legalists in other words considering themselves to be following the law and they were steeped in self righteous formal religion ceremonies and rituals and yet had not christ And even as John the Baptist faced that opposition in his day, so we can expect the same opposition from those of our religious society today who know not Christ. Yohane ada kuma na ndiwo mutsa utenga ndi mikwiringiri ma ndema vuto umuso ndi mmene ife ama kono ano tembekezera za kuma na ndi anthoti tsutsa kuchokera kuzimbeto zao zimene ada khazikikabo adati tsutsa utengo mene tukulalikira That's what verse 24 says in John 1 and they which were sent were the Pharisees in other words who stood in opposition to Christ and his glory And they challenged John's authority like they'll do today. If you're not of their number, they're going to ask you then by what authority you do what you do. They asked him, verse 25, and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ or Elias, neither that prophet? They were saying that he had received no commission from them or the Sanhedrin, which was the governing body of the day. He had not been trained in their schools. See, that's real important today. People want to know what school did you receive your training? He, he hadn't been trained in any of their schools. Thank God. He was not identified with any of their religious systems. He wasn't a Pharisee. He wasn't a Sadducee. He wasn't a Herodian. All these religious people of the day, he stood outside the gate. And I dare say we're going to face the same questions today because when mm. word gets out that you're out there preaching Christ and him crucified and salvation in by and through him alone, It's going to stir up these religious groups. They're going to come and question you. We want to see your authority to preach. We want to see exactly why it is you're preaching what you preach. But we need no other authority than what God has been pleased to reveal in us concerning Christ and salvation in by and through him alone and his death. That's all the authority we need.
mene yongane ada mfusira ni mene so inuyonga nikuta timula likile uchenga mwafumu nchole nene ni mozama zipe mbezo zipe ya kukufusani baibos kuleke mna kama mkina kutu ndana ada kutoza nudu mkala mbusa nisiri zipene mbea kutu wane tseni mapepe wala usaiza uri nuyo kuna mbina kukala mbusa kifuwa yonabu ni mene niyo mungu lakatu nga mfumu nchola mao ni mene jipe mbezo chima chikitira Kupesa choyo uri chito zemu nukuna kare mcho kore nere ame nekila adu temu nondome kondino koto lao la iwo Kupesa nila murungu ai I get this question quite often Well what school did you attend And I say to my shame that I was raised in this religious system And had been like the Apostle Paul for Saul before the Lord called him He was climbing in the ranks and yet, my answer is, what I preach to you today, I did not learn in any human institution. But when it pleased Ooh. God to reveal Christ in me, Christ therefore, me. I preach him. Well, we've gone as far as the Lord's purpose today. We'll draw a line there and Lord willing, pick up next time with uh, verse 26. Because the pitil is a Kumanza Mabe, Mabe Kuala Roti, the Granipo Mueva, Mungu, and Chogolele, and a lot of the Kodo Karanima, Ameneta Karanao, there on Chigula Lero. I'll turn it back to you. To God be all the glory and in the blood of Cain, for sure, what a thing the Lord has given us. This gospel that we are preaching is uncompromisable, and uh, there is nobody who can preach this if it is not the Lord Amen. who has taught it in school. Yes. So it comes from the Lord, that it is the Lord Himself. Yes. Let's open our hymns, close our service. Hymn number 87. It's ever, Madam Throat, what's the name of the hymn number 87? You know, the program is the same as the number 87. Hymn number 87. Bonani in
Gracious Father, thank you for this time together in your word, how deep and profound your word is, and yet simple in this sense that it all points to your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for the testimony of John the Baptist that you have preserved here in your word for us to read and to see how it is that you're pleased to work through those men that you raise up and send forth and that their message is clear and distinct and simple. It's nothing about us, but it's all about your son, that you purposed should save a people, and uh, that you sent into this world in the fullness of the time. And he came and redeemed from under the curse of the law, each one that you have so chosen. And that is the message. We're not to be persuaded or to be influenced by the questions of those that oppose, but simply by your grace to stand and declare Christ. So I pray that you would be with each of us as preachers, that such would be our testimony to Christ alone without compromise. And so I ask your blessing on each one that you have raised up and are using to declare the glories of Christ and may you receive all the honor and the glory and give you the praise and honor in his precious name. Amen. 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 